Hello and welcome to Science Never Stops. I'm your host, Joseph Vick, with the U.S. Space and Rocket Center. Coming to you today with a geology lesson. Geology is the study and observance of the changing of the Earth. Not only just rocks, but volcanism and anything having to do with the active living planet Earth. Now, Earth is considered a living, ever-changing planet, not only because there are volcanoes erupting and changing and creating land masses, but what once is created is also destroyed. So that process is in a three breakdown step, and we can abbreviate that W-E-D, and that stands for weathering, erosion, and deposition. And all that is doing is changing the landscape where you have the active changing of rocky material. I have in front of me Joseph Mountain, where you have uplifts, earthquakes changing, all of a sudden, suddenly, the earth, and you have a mountain form. But over millions or billions of years in geologic time, this can weather down to nothing. That is one of the beautiful things of Earth. Uh, it's also one of the most disappointing things of Earth, if you want to study the different layers of the Earth, because over time, they build on top of one another, being compressed down, and can be lost forever. Since the Earth is almost five billion years old, uh, you have lots of change that occurred within the living planet Earth. Other planets do the same uh, if they have an active closed atmosphere with weather patterns. But on Earth, the one thing that changes the majority of all geological landscape is water. Water in its three phases, solid ice, liquid flowing water, and not so much steam, but when you have the creation of steam and clouds and you have clouds raining down, that can also add to some weathering. Now, let me move to our mountain our mountain can fall apart, like cha, break apart into smaller pieces, and the active breaking apart of a larger object, geologic object, to a smaller object happens to be the process called weathering. And weathering can be changed, so I have here smaller rocks broken down from my mountain, and weathering can be done by water, ice getting into the cracks of the larger rocks and then it freezing and breaking them apart, wind blowing over the rocks and creating smooth surfaces, same thing with water. Constant flow of water over a rock over time will make it smooth out, smooth out all the rough edges. Even plant roots going in in between rock crevices can break apart rocky material. And you also have humans and plants that by artificial means can rub or knock into or blow up uh, mountains and create new landscapes. So with this, I have these rocky materials here. So we're going to see by the process of, I've already broken it up with weathering, with a process we call next on our list, WE for erosion. The earth is 70% water. And so with that 70% water, water is a powerful force that changes the landscape. So with that, I wanted to take this water and pour it over the collection of rock that I have in this bowl and see what happens, what influence, erosion influence, this water has on this pile of rock. So let's see, let's check it out. Here I have an overview of our smaller rock material uh, that has weathered away from our Joseph Mountain. And I have poured already a beaker or this is about a quarter of a cup of water that I have dyed blue to make it a little bit easier to see. So we're going to see what power of water has over the weathered mountain materials. So I'm going to pour and let's observe. I saw no movement. Erosion 
is the process where there is movement of sediment. So these large rocks in this scenario would be considered our sediment sample. There was no movement, so the water was not powerful enough to erode away this rock sample. But over time, it possibly could. So let's give some geologic time, and I'm going to, by magic of camera, uh, geologically change this rock into its next state, which we're going to go from this smaller rock, which was weathered from the mountain, weather magically by power of video this rock sample into a soil sample. On Earth, soil is a collective weathering breakdown of rock and it also includes organic material. As you can see, there's some organic wood material inside of this sample. So just like we did before, we're going to take a sample of water, again, another quarter cup, and by process of weathering, we have this soil. Now we're going with the use of water to see if there is a chance of erosion or movement of sediment. As I applied the water, you saw this top section move. There was some slight movement of the sediment. That is erosion. Farmers especially have to deal with erosion. Also those if you live in certain parts of the world where there is dusty climate, the dust bowl that happened many years ago in the uh, Midwestern United States, blew the soil off the surface, making it very difficult. So that was not only water movement here, but you have the actions of wind. Also ice can move sediment and also gravity. The breakdown of soil on a mountainside can cause the movement, mudslides for example, of sediment from a cliffside. So again, because of magic of video, I can with millions of years of geologic time, move from this soil to the next most breakdown state sand. Or on earth it is a breakdown of quartz. Quartz is one of the most abundant materials found on planet earth. So we have our yellow sand here and on the beach sand moves quite often. It's very easy to, with the wind blowing, creation of sand dunes. Now with the creation of sand dunes, once you have the movement of erosion, you have the dropping off of sediment. So if wind comes by and blows the sand, and then once the wind stops blowing, it drops it in place, that dropping of sediment is called deposition. So you drop what has been picked up, and that too can be wind. Water, once it's moved something, once it drops the sediment over time, that sediment drop is deposition. Also, the mighty Mississippi Delta when it deposits all that really good stuff, that fertile material that it's carried in the delta, that too is called deposition. So I have here water. We're going to see how much movement of sediment or erosion takes place with the fine grains of sand. Now, sand more than any of the other sediments that we added water to to test our erosion. Notice with sand, you had the most erosion take place during our sample amount of water added to it. So you had the movement and the very much change of landscape. This is very much seen if you go to the beach, again the creation of sand dunes, the tides, the water rolling in, and pushing your sand castles away that you built, and moving in new bits of material that the ocean has washed up from the shore. So from this, you see that there is movement. Water is one, sand is one, ice is one, animals are one. I want you to take a look in your surroundings, around where you are, write in your journal what kinds of places you see weathering, erosion, and deposition happening, and draw that and describe that in your journal. 
And as you compare these different examples of weathering, erosion, and deposition that you see from nature, sort of look back at what you did in your control samples in your bowls with rock, soil, and sand. Compare the differences. How similar are they? How different are they on a larger scale versus smaller scale? And sort of think to yourself, what kind of issues would a farmer have when they're looking at soil erosion over time? So it's something that we have to deal with on Earth at a commercial scale as well. So as the Earth continues and ever changes, science is solid and science never stops.